So one thing about Anmen project is that uh, several people have tried this project before uh, for their final projects in the previous class, but no one has success. And he's the first one to do it. So that's why he was called the Python wizard. And <laughs> Thank you, Jia. Uh, well, thank you, everyone. Uh, today, my project, uh, I will present my research effort into something that's called handwritten math expression recognition. And before we move into the details, I just want to quickly uh, mention my inspiration. So uh, when I was looking for a topic, as I was essentially just looking for anything that's nerdy, because anything nerdy is interesting to me. Anything that's technical, uh, I like technical things because they're a good challenge and something that's somewhat useful uh, so that my project can be presented. So, and uh, while well, with that in mind, I found uh, this paper and, and essentially my project will be uh, following uh, a lot of these papers uh, results. So first, uh, let's talk about what we're trying to do. We're trying to get from an image like on the left to the expression on the right. And traditionally, uh, what people have tried to do is to draw boxes around these uh, symbols, crop them out and individually classify each of them. And at the end, uh, do some analysis to in order to put them back together as an expression. Now, my uh, project is gonna use a different method where we replace all of those steps with a big deep learning model and uh, this method requires a lot of data, which leads to the creation of something called Chrome. This is a competition on this exact topic that I'm trying to do. And the data set I will be using is the data set offered uh, in this competition from 2011 to 2014. This data set con uh, contains about 8,900 expressions of 107 unique symbols, and it is skewed uh, it has a skewed distribution uh, along the uh, symbols. And uh, using this data set, I will split them in three parts for the training, for validation, and for testing at the end. So with that data, uh, let's talk about the pipeline. First of all, any data has to go through a pre-processing uh, process. So on the left, we have the ground truth, which is what we're trying to reproduce from the image on the right. So with the expression on the left, we're gonna to get tokenized, essentially assigning a number to each unique symbol that, uh, that's in the expression so that the machine can read it. And with the image on the right, we're going to binarize and resize. Binarize means uh, turning into black and white and resize and rescale into something that looks like this. With the, uh, now with the pre-processed image, it's gonna go through my model and my model is gonna try and predict what uh, the expression is on the image. So the overview of my model is gonna contain the encoder, which takes in the image. The encoder is uh, gonna spit out some features that it can get from the image. And these features will be put into something called the decoder. And that decoder is gonna give out the expressions that we want. So let's dive, uh, take a more detailed look into, first of all, the, the encoder. And the encoder for my case is just a simple convolutional neural network, essentially the same one that uh, everyone has used for image classification. And uh, essentially what it's just do is tries to squeeze the image down smaller and smaller into finer and finer features. Essentially, uh, you can see uh, my detailed uh, architecture of each convolution block. And after the image go through the encoder, uh, in the encoder gives out the features, this feature is going to go into the decoder and inside the decoder is a loop. And at the start of each loop, we're gonna start with a symbol that is predicted uh, from uh, the previous loop and the GRU, which is the, our prediction, uh, our predicting model. And the GRU is gonna have a carry over hidden state from the previous loop. Now, uh, the hidden state of the GRU and the features are going to get uh, eaten by something called the attention mechanics. And at the same time, the previously predictive symbol is going to get embedded into a higher dimension vector. 
Now, after that, the attention model will spit out something called a context. And using this context and the embedded to uh, symbol, GRU is going to predict the next symbol, which we will concatenate into our output uh, to get the final expression. Now, with that uh, decoder explanation, we'll t I will talk about my what I got from my model. And first of all, uh, I want to introduce to you my metrics. First, uh, so expression error rate is quite simple. Essentially, if my prediction has anything wrong in it, for example, missing symbol, or a wrong symbol in place, or an extra symbol, it will count that as a wrong prediction. However, this doesn't tell me what kind of symbols, or what kind of uh, sim yeah, symbols I get wrong. So I want to introduce you to a second metric called word error rate. And this essentially classify each errors that the expression error rate uh, just combine to each other. So for example, it characterized the missing error as deletion, the uh, wrong symbol prediction as substitution, and the extra symbol as insertion. And at the end, this all these counts of errors will be summed up and divide by the total number of words to get the word error rate. And with those metrics in mind, I will show you my models compared to the papers. For uh, As you can see, after two weeks, uh, my model has about 88% of expression error rate and a 43.5% of word error rate. And compared, uh, when you look at this number, but compared to the papers, uh, considering the time limit, I think I'm fairly happy with this uh, result. So now, uh, I will jump into the demo. As you can see, uh, the UI for my demo is very simple. Here, you can click to upload some uh, image. For example, let's take, uh, I don't know, like this one. Uh, for this one, you can see that there's a couple of uh, com fairly complicated uh, symbols to detect, uh, but my model can act a uh, very reasonable uh, give out the correct prediction uh, in spite of the two-dimensional nature of the expression. Now, I want to plot this model attention to show you what my model is doing to the image. As you can see, it starts off looking on the left side and uh, it slowly moves its attention uh, to the right side of the image in order to predict each symbol. As you can see, and uh, one more thing here, uh, what if you don't have an image, but you want to write something yourself? Uh, I have here uh, is a canvas for you to write your own expression. For example, you can write, say something Fairly simple. I'll say something like this. You can uh, click this button to submit, and then you click translate. And here, hopefully, the model predicts correctly. Now, so uh, for my future works, as I mentioned, uh, this model is fairly simple uh, for this task with just two weeks of development. So there are a lot of uh, things I want to try, uh, more data collection, more augmentation and pre-processing. And uh, finally, I want to experiment with a lot more, a stronger model uh, to say, and a lot more complicated uh, techniques that I've kind of skipped over uh, with the, uh, uh, yeah, when I skip over during the paper. And here are my references. Thank you for listening.